Hey everyone, welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Jack Watson, UI UX designer, illustrator, animator, and donut connoisseur. And today we have an Illustrator Pro Tips and we will be taking a look at Generative Recolor. Generative Recolor is a relatively new feature taking advantage of Adobe's AI Firefly and it's a great way to very quickly test out color ideas without having to pull together and commit to a variety of color palettes first and to help you find color inspiration outside of your typical choices. If you're anything like me, I tend to favor colors and it can be great to break that habit. For those of you in the Firefly Discord, a lot of this will be familiar to the events that Sean and I host over there, but if you're totally new or feeling nervous, stay with me. I'm hoping that seeing my process and the tool, I can alleviate some of that anxiety. So, uh, for I've got a bunch of examples that we're going to take a look at here today on different artboards. Um, I'm going to start with some illustrations first. We're going to look at some branding and more so, some more complex stuff. If you're joining the live chat on YouTube or Behance, feel free to post, post prompt suggestions. I'm going to give you your first pro tip. If you're suggesting prompts, um, one, to two, one, two, or three word prompts, shorter prompts, work better for generative recolor than longer prompts. So if you're suggesting um, prompts in the chat, be sure to keep them nice and short. Those are going to be easier to, to work with. So I'm going to grab one of these illustrations, and there's a couple ways that you can kind of start here. Um, we can either select the whole illustration, like our little bird friend here, or um, if you've got things separated out into groups, like I've got for these illustrations, you can actually generate on groups if you wanted to have a bit more control. So if you wanted to generate different colors for different components of an illustration, you can actually use generative recolor on individual pieces and parts, which we'll get to in a second. But there's a number of ways that you're going to be able to get to generative recolor. I'm just going to select my bird here. And to do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison, I'm going to do Command C and Command F to paste copy, move these guys over, Oop. and then we're going to select our copy here, and you can get to it from the properties panel, which is under window, um, right down here under recolor. If you don't see that though, because the quick actions are contextual, they're based on um, what you have selected, so sometimes you'll see different actions down there. Uh, if you don't see it down there, you can very easily go to edit, edit colors, and you can actually pick either recolor artwork or generative recolor. It's going to open up the same panel, I'll show you, and um, you can tab between these. So you can get to the kind of classic one, or you can get to generative recolor from the same window. One thing I want to note before we begin is if you do accidentally click outside of this window, it does close. So you're going to want to go back and just kind of reopen that if you accidentally click out. Okay, so I did see a couple of prompts come through the chat. I saw a rainbow, uh, rainbow birds, rainbow cockatoos. Um, hummingbird would also be a good one, although I see Annika wrote humming blob. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with maybe we'll try iridescent hummingbird. And we're going to see what we get. And we're just going to hit generate down here. So you're going to type your prompt in here, hit generate. There's also those sample prompts, which actually minimize. You can just open them back up again while you're running a prompt. And there we go. Ooh, those are really cool. I love bright colors. <laughs> um, anyways, so I want to point out a couple of things that are um, happening here, what's kind of going on under the hood of this tool, or at least my kind of interpretation, what I've been seeing. Um, it seems to keep kind of the original values. So you can see here that kind of like, it's keeping the lights and darks from my original image, the, the values. And it's also, for the most part, keeping the same kind of like saturation level for each of the individual colors from our original illustration. The third thing that I've kind of noticed is that it keeps the same number of colors. So we've got three colors in our bird. We've got three colors in our bird in the original as well. Um, I've actually heard from some people that they find this a little bit easier to control than the traditional recolor art for this reason. Um, when they use the traditional recolor art, they get really wild results where like the color saturation kind of switches around or the value and it doesn't quite uh, kind of line up what they want. You can sort of adjust the recolor art settings too, but that's a whole different pro tip stream. It gets pretty complex. So if you have trouble with the classic recolor, give this a try. You can see that it does a pretty good job of keeping my colors um, sort of in line. But there is one thing I want to note about the values. And for that, we're going to take a look actually at our little dogs. So we've got our little space dogs here. These are one color black currently. So you might want to use something like this if you were doing vinyl cutting on like a Cricut printer. Um, so we're or a Cricut maker. Um, I'm going to select my dogs 
I'm going to show you what I mean. So we've got, obviously, the values are what's going to be affected um, when we change the colors. If we've got 100% black or 100% white, though, those extreme values, we're not actually going to change the, um, the colors at all. It'll, they'll stay black or they'll stay white. Something to just kind of note. So if we go in here to recolor, we go to generative recolor, and we, uh, we just type in here something like northern lights and we hit generate. YouTube, uh, we've got a prompt over from YouTube, vivid colors, but not too much oomph. <laughs> All right, I'll try that one next. But you can see that when I have 100% black, it doesn't actually generate any colors. So I need to change that. It would be the same if we had 100% white. So I'm gonna um, get out of this. One more thing I wanted to note while we're here. If you ever feel like you wanna um, go back to the original colors, you can hit this reset. And this works in recolor or generative recolor. I'll show you in a sec. Um, so you could think of that as like your undo button if you wanted to change. So I'm going to select the planet here and I'm just going to use variations of gray instead of 100% black. So we'll pick like a lighter gray. I'm just going to use my swatches panel over here to just kind of do that really quickly. Go through here and pick some lighter and darker values and lighten this by a little bit. All right, now when I reselect these and I hit recolor and we try vivid colors. I don't know that it will recognize oomph because I think that's a, what are those words called? Onomatopoeia? <laughs> um, words that for sounds or something like that. Um, and I hit generate. You're going to see that it's actually, sh it should apply um, color variations here. So you can see that now I've got colors because I've changed that black for a gray. I know that there are a lot of artists out there that actually prefer to work in grayscale. So if you are an artist that likes to start in grayscale, this might be a great way in your process to create color variations once you've kind of got the foundations down with those um, values. And uh, we can create some different um, colors. There we go. Yeah, Penny Doodles is saying in the chat, I enjoy generative recolor more than manual recolor. Yeah, it's it can be great for you if this is like, you know, easier for your process. It really comes down to like what works for you. I'm going to show you um, in a second, actually. You know what? Let's do that right now. So I'm going to go over to this more complex illustration, something that's got a little bit more going on. There's a little bit more colors going on here. So I'm going to click on this and we're going to go into recolor and we're just going to pick, um, let's pick a color prompt here. Let's try tropical rainforests. We'll hit generate, right? And we're going to get uh, a bunch of color options here. I'm going to give it a minute to load. There we go. Now let's say overall these are pretty good, but I want to, I want like, maybe I want a little bit more um, blue or maybe I really want more green in here. So I can actually sway my prompt a little bit by going over to the colors here and I can hit this little plus. And if you had a brand color that you specifically wanted to make sure that you incorporated, so if we're looking at branding, you want to make sure I absolutely need this color to be represented in this, you know, illustration of this design, you can go ahead and just add it right by clicking on it here. Um, the other option is you can, um, if we can add a second color, um, we can go into this one down here and this lets you manually um, select colors. So let me just pick uh, something to start with and you can switch. Uh, I've got it set to hue, saturation and brightness. You could pick uh, grayscale, RGB, CMYK um, or web safe RGB, or if you had a specific hex value that you wanted to put in, you could um, go down here and you could actually copy and paste that hex value in. So I'm going to bring this up so we can actually get a color going. I'm going to grab, drag over to kind of like my blues. Maybe we'll go into the purple, something like that. And we'll add that to our list as well. And now when I hit generate, it's going to create new variations with the same prompt that it makes sure to incorporate those colors. So now you can see we've got more blues going on. We've got more of the... Uh, purple going on. I kind of like the purple line work in this one. So let's say we like the direction that this is going, but we're not a hundred percent happy with the way this looks, right? I'm not so sure. I don't like how it's handling the background. You know, we could generate that in a separate group or something like that, but instead I'm going to click out. That's the first thing that you need to do. So I'm going to click out to close the uh, window. And what that does is I like to think of it as like, you're kind of like setting your colors. Um, it means it's going to get rid of all those variations. So you won't be able to go back to that. So make sure that you are happy with this generation first, and then you're going to go back into the recolor window. 
I found that if I try to just do this all at once using one tab and then navigate into the other, sometimes it switches back to my original colors. So I like to just kind of like set those colors. And then we're gonna go and I'm gonna show you how I personally like to work. So I like to create a variation. And then I like to go into the traditional recolor area and I like to make some adjustments here, right? And there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. Um, you can go down here, uh, if you had a specific color library that you wanted to load, like if you had a document, you know, a set of color swatches for a brand that you had already pulled and you wanted to only use those. Or you can go down here and you can set the number of colors, which we'll get into in a second. But um, if you want to, you can go in and drag them around. Um, you can change the color order. So this is if you wanted to have the colors, the same colors you have, you just wanted them to be applied to different, in different ways to different elements in the illustration, you can kind of cycle through these. But you can see this is kind of what people mean when they say that they find that the traditional, the classic recolor kind of, it gets a little bit wild in its color combinations. Um, so if you don't like that look and you just want to have the kind of original values just with different colors, again, you can hit reset up here and it's going to go back to the original colors that we had. So you don't have to worry about, none of this is going to be destructive. Unless of course you close the window, then you'll have to do like an undo. But down here at the bottom, if you just wanted to make some slight tweaks to this, you've got two of these little buttons. You can drag this first one here and that's gonna change the brightness and contrast. Or the second one here is gonna increase or decrease the saturation. So you can kind of start to make some adjustments. But I wanna get rid of that yellow in the background, so I'm gonna go to the advanced options. And this is gonna give you a preview of all the colors that you've got going in here. These are all the colors that were selected from generative recolor. And you can go in here and you can manually adjust. So I don't like this, I wanna change this. Ooh, I liked that green. We'll go with like a green color or something like that. And sometimes, like you can see with this illustration, you get a lot of colors. Like there's a lot going on here. It might be a little bit too much. So I might wanna cut back on the number of colors that I have, especially for like I said, like branding stuff. We don't wanna end up with 30 colors. I'm gonna go down here and, or if you're working for print, you know, you might wanna have a limited number of colors. Uh, you can drop down from all to one through five. So maybe we can go with like a three color. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna take those similar looking colors. So all the greens, all the kind of purples and pinks, all of the oranges, it's gonna group them together. So you can make adjustments on these color groups like you can see here to kind of change overall um, the colors for those. And you can create kind of like more limited colors all the way down to like one color if you wanted. All right, so I think that looks pretty cool, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so we've gone over a whole bunch of ways that you can kind of like create uh, color generation, color variations using generative color and how you can kind of edit them. But you're probably sitting there th wondering to yourself, okay, Jack, that's all great, but I don't even know where to start with making, like writing prompts. I, I'm still trying to like figure that out or, you know, every time I try to write prompts, I can't get really interesting colors or I really struggle with coming up with things. So I'm going to walk you through sort of how I like to come up with um, prompts. Uh, I, I really think that branding exercises, I've got a branding example here. I think some of the techniques from branding are really helpful in particular with coming up with the, in particular coming up with like the look and feel that you want and mood boarding. And you can apply these to any design or illustration project. So start by like you've got an illustration that you want to make think about like the look and feel that you're going for and put together a mood board. That's super helpful to help you kind of visualize the look and feel you want with kind of photo references. So I have this library brand I made as an example. So for this, I could very easily use um, a prompt like library. So maybe let's start there. I'm gonna scale these down because we're probably gonna make a lot of variations of these. So this is a library brand. That's kind of like the most basic thing we can call it. And if we just type in library and we hit generate, it's gonna give us some variations, right? But that's only kind of like the beginning and we could continue to kind of like generate and generate and generate and try to come up with things kind of like down this rabbit hole of the same word. But uh, if you wanna come up with a lot of different um, color combinations, mood boarding is really gonna help you out. So I'm gonna close out of this and I start to think about what's the, what is the feeling I want this brand to have? Who is the audience for? The same thing with your illustration. Who is the audience? What is the feel you're going for? For this, I want something maybe that's like playful, that's related to kids, but also has a little bit of a sophisticated, sophisticated or like studious side to it, right? So we're taking a look at this and I actually went through it. I made a little mini boot board for this. So these are all Adobe stock photos. 
And I just, like, went onto Adobe Stock and I searched for, like, kids playing, kids party, school, back to school, things like that, classroom. And I found images that were, like, this is the look and feel that I want people to associate when they see this image or they see this brand. I want them to think of this imagery, right? And normally this is what I would do anyways if I was pulling colors. I would put together a mood board, right? Just like this. And that's, you know, that gives you a starting point. You could use those words like birthday party, classroom to generate prompts. But I like to take it actually even a step further. <coughs> Sorry about that. And I like to look at these images and I like to find things in these images that are actually uh, have interesting colors that I like. So I really like, for example, in this first image here, and I'll zoom in, these balloons. I think these, so I could type in like children's party balloons or something like that if I wanted to find colors that I, you know, reflected that. <coughs> or like these color blocks on this table, I could type in um, kids plastic toy blocks or something like that, or like colorful plastic toy blocks, if I like those particular colors. So I actually go in, not just the, the images that I pull, but like what specifically about these photos do I like? And you can do this with images either for a mood board or your own photos. So like if you have photos that you like or um, images that you've pulled for a mood board for putting together an illustration, you could take a look at these individual pieces and parts, like vintage toys would be a cool one to do. Um, I really like these backpacks and the back to school images. You could type in like backpack or school supplies, you know, things like that that are going to get you a little bit more specific and a little bit closer to the things you actually like about the images rather than just like generic scenes that you kind of associate with the brand. So if we try that out with our uh, brand here, I'm actually going to make a copy and we'll say instead of kids party, we'll try a prompt like um, kids birthday cake and see what we get. That's going to be maybe a little bit more interesting. Yeah, Sean in our chat says don't use Legos. No, but you could use something like blocks, right? Like uh, like colorful wooden blocks or like toy blocks or something like that. So this is kind of cool. I like the like soft pinks. These are maybe not colors, again, that I would have picked myself. Um, even though I've kind of pulled these images, I have a tendency to always kind of pull bright, saturated, vibrant colors. And so if you want to kind of break yourself of that habit, if you want to kind of break yourself of like always getting in a rut with the same colors over and over again, this is a really great way to start. And then let's try another one. <coughs> so I'll go down here. I'll hit, <coughs> sorry about that. And I'm going to go to <coughs> generative recolor. And this time we're going to try school supplies. So we're trying to go with something maybe a little bit more studious, a little bit less playful. Although I think this could work too, these like greens over here. And that's kind of fun. It's giving me like a watermelon, almost like a summer vibe. I think this one could work really nicely if you made some adjustments to kind of like these browns, like the blue is kind of nice. And again, we could sway this as well. We could go in here to colors and we could add a specific color if we wanted to and say, I want to see school supplies, but I specifically want to have blue incorporated into it. <laughs> Get Jack Waterstat. I know I have, I tried, but it's like, didn't seem to, didn't seem to help. I appreciate you chat. Um, Carol saying I saw recently and it doesn't destroy the image underneath. Yeah. So your image is still your image, right? Like this is still the art that you created. You're just coming, you're using the tool to kind of like help yourself get past that sort of, um, brain block when you're trying to come up with color generations. Let's say you come up with a brand and you really like, you know, the colors, but the client's like, that's not really what I want re to represent the brand. And so you can kind of like help yourself get past that block and um, create a whole bunch of variations in different colors that can kind of help you. It's just, it's a tool. It's a tool to help you, uh, you know, ideate and come up with different ideas. So there we go. Um, I wanted to show you one more thing about this, and that is specifically in regards to working with a brand. Um, once you have established that we like this particular set, let's say we like this set here, or actually let's go with the little pink from the birthday. Let's say we're happy with this. Um, you can add these colors directly in as swatches so that you can continue to use them in the, um, in your brand. So let's say you wanted to pull these and you wanted to use them, you know, in like brand collateral, you needed to kind of have those 
colors separate in your swatches. If you go over here and you click on new color group, you can add those as a color group right in um, Illustrator. So you can have those swatches pulled out uh, for your branding project. So we can like go over here and we can kind of like add our swatches right next to this, just like that. And go all the way down. All right, there's one more thing that I do want to make sure that I touch on um, because I think it's important. And I can show you a couple more tricks if we have time, especially when it comes to picking, color, like creating color palettes like this. I have a, a really cool um, way to do this using a uh, blend if we have time. We'll see. So I do want to show, because uh, I know this question is going to come up, that you can use more complicated things in Illustrator. Most things that you use in Illustrator will work with uh, generative recolor. So um, this was made for an Illustrator challenge where we use 3D effects. I click into the um, group here and navigate in. I can show you in the appearance panel over here that we've got a 3D material effect um, applied to this. So this will work, re generative recolor will work on 3D effects, it will work on other effects, it will work with gradients because that's been asked before. Um, it will work with brushes, you just need to make sure that you have the colorization mode set correctly on your brush. So if you are, want to use a brush, make sure that when you build the brush or go into the brush settings, instead of none, um, it says you know something like hue shift to make sure that your brush allows you to change the color. So I'm going to demonstrate this really quickly, um, recoloring. I did turn off ray tracing on this so that it wouldn't take as much time. And we'll do like um, roller skates as a prompt. We could do uh, balloons or something like that as well. We could have gone with the balloons that we liked from the previous, but there we go. And then I'll apply one of these and it's going to take a minute to load, but you can see that it, it does change all of the colors, change the shirt color, it changed the background color, it changed some of the details on the face actually. So you could use this with 3D effects and all the other effects as well. Um, I'll start just ask, asking, how do the base original colors influence the prompt? The values and the saturation influence the prompt as well as the number of colors. So it's going to keep the same number of colors from your original illustration, it's going to keep the same values, and it's going to overall keep the general kind of like saturation so that it, it's just kind of like changing the colors is not changing any of the other things about your illustration. So there we go. And I promised I would show you this cool trick with the blend. And so we have a couple of minutes, so I'm going to show you that really quickly. So this is one of the other ways I actually like to create color palettes. So you don't actually have um, an illustration that you're wanting to apply this to. You're just at the point where you're trying to come up with color palettes by themselves. So I'm going to pick a variety of grays, um, remembering that I don't want the 100% black to 100% white because those aren't actually going to generate. I'm going to group these and I'm going to copy and paste them. And I'm going to set these all to white. Double clicking here, set these all to white. And I'm going to make a blend between these. There we go. We can increase the number of blend steps if we want to. So we can create maybe a couple of different colors. We'll go to recolor. And I think I saw somebody earlier ask for colorful, a different colorful bird. So we're going to go with Scarlet Macaw. Hit generate and we're going to get a color palette just automatically created, um, filling in with these blends. Oh no, what happened here? Oh, there we go. It looks like it's just a visual bug. So there you go. This is a really cool way to not only come with up with colors, but also because we use that blend to create those, um, value changes, we can see that it's uh, creating kind of tints for us as well. All right, so I think that's all the time that we have for today, unfortunately, <laughs> on Adobe Live. Thank you so much for joining me for some tips and tricks working with the new generative recolor um, and some recolor tips in general in Illustrator. I hope these tips empower you to try creative recolor in your work while still feeling like you're in control of your work. We're still using our skills to come up with prompts that are relevant to the look and feel that we want using that mood boarding process. And then we're even going beyond the generated, generated colors to, instead of using them as is, to modify them and make them our own. This is just another tool in your toolbox to figure out if it makes sense for your workflow and how it fits into your workflow. Um, but stay tuned here. Uh, we've got a more amazing live streams up here on Behance, more people showing you their process and their workflow after me. Bye, everyone.